around the back. I'm going to go Jen, Richard. All of you be brief. Go ahead. Me? I know you all, so please be brief. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I have a few things to say, but I do have an answer to Bernice's question, and I do uh, have some que a question for Luis and Lieutenant Carter here. Um, basically, what I'm saying is that while I think, yes, the police have made the case that curfew can be a tool in their toolbox, they have not really made the case that it's going to be an effective tool for solving Silver Springs problems, or at least be the premier strategy that's being offered. Uh, the reason for that partly is, uh, last speaker was saying there, is that there's a, nearly uh, 20 years of criminal justice research that has shown that curfews are not effective as far as reducing crime. There was even a study done in D.C. that showed after the D.C. curfew was implemented, there wasn't even a change in uh, juvenile trauma cases at the hospitals. So it had, in terms of that area of juvenile victimization, no effect. Uh, where it does have effect, though, is it drains police resources. Uh, that was one of the comments as the pre PG study was that the reason it's very rarely implemented is because officers present the time it takes to process those cases. Uh, where it is aggressively enforced, such as Dallas, that have 30 officers that are assigned to curfew enforcement. Uh, so I don't think we do have the luxury of assigning a large group of officers just for curfew enforcement. Um, so. It, it, it's problems like that, and many of the communities where they do have curfews, D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore, they supplement that with curfew centers. They have a place to take kids with staff training to work with them, whatever the level of the problem is. Because, Valerie, you're right. Just sweeping kids up as a catch and release kind of thing <laughs> is not going to be effective at getting them to causes. And so this has to be supported with other kinds of services to get kids that do have problems to the resources they need to address those problems. Uh, otherwise, it is just basically a law enforcement protection release. Um, which kind of leads me to the other thing, that this whole issue about creating nighttime entertainment districts is not a problem of just Silver Spring. Cities around the US, the United Kingdom, Australia, have all been dealing with these that is called the nighttime economy. They've come up with plans and strategies for dealing with these problems that are the result of having successful nighttime entertainment districts. It's issues such as providing adequate transportation services when big events let out, like concerts and movies and whatnot, making sure that there's uh, adequate food and drink uh, facilities available for people when they're let out to these shows so you don't have conflicts that arise when you have too few places for people to go to after these kinds of things, and coordination simply across all the different uh, organizations, businesses, and government agencies to take care of these things that you know are going to ensue when you have large groups of people late at night, concentrated in an area with the potential for conflict. Um, let's see, I wanted to get to Bernice's question on the juvenile. Uh, Jim, I want to make sure that other people have a chance. I don't want you to respond to everything that's been said. So you've got more new things to okay. add, that's great. Okay. But we're going to have to cut this off in about six right. minutes, so give your colleagues right. some time. Okay. The uh, National Center for Juvenile Justice in Pittsburgh has identified the prime juvenile prime time as being the hours after school lets out for parents to come home. And that was also one of the reasons that many of the curfew evaluations have shown a minimal reduction in juvenile crime because that's when it's actually occurring after uh, uh, school hours, uh, not late night. Um, then, well, my question is that the uh, 4th of July gang fight, or fight was between two specific gangs. Since the 4th of July, have those two gangs fought, or what's been happening with them? Can I defer that to the members of the police department? There's, 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 there's been rumblings, mostly uh, via uh, Facebook, uh, mm. e even YouTube. It, it, you know, we've been you know, staying abreast of them. Right. And uh, my uh, my staff deals with a significant amount of one particular group that was there that one night. Right. Um, and so there is this conversation that is going on between us and them to the extent that, right. yeah, that, you know, this thing hasn't been totally resolved yet, but they are aware of the uh, attention mm -hmm. that they have drawn. Mm -hmm. um, and 
again, I can't speak for the other group or for the, even the group that we are dealing with right. in saying that all of them, you know, would rather stay out of trouble, right. but, you know, that can change between now and tomorrow as well, you know. But in communities like Boston and Chicago that was initially perceived as being a citywide juvenile violence problem, it was found that it was specific gangs that had particular disputes going on and interventions focused on those particular gangs were very effective at then diffusing the problem rather than trying to address every juvenile in the city. Well, th that's why we've um, entered into a partnership. Yeah. It's a very informal partnership of uh, some street outreach programs in the district where we're sharing yeah. information, but we're also figuring out how we that's leverage right. the resources we have and what they have as well. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that there's kind of three of them these folks that have been directly involved yeah. in trying to intervene post fight in this event. And I know that that conversation is continuing. In fact, uh, at the very first county council meeting that we had to talk about curfew, I bumped into two of your outreach workers out the fuel pump, they're outside there. And uh, they had a lot of information subsequent to the fights about what was going on, why we came up before the fights with the funding issue. So Louise's mm -hmm. uh, people were definitely plugged in and trying to squash this. I mean, all due respect to you, Lieutenant, I'm you know, concerned that we don't get into the we've got trouble in River City mentality here, that we really do need an analysis of what problems are in the community here and develop solutions specific to those kinds of things rather than trying to come up with something that's going to take the entire community. 